But flip over to chapter 2, Ruth. So we see here Ruth, she's saying, no, thy people are going to be my people. Thy God is my God. Verse number 10, we see this interaction with Boaz. Boaz was someone who was near of kin. She's going to, to just glean and try to get what she can because they're poor. And she was working in his fields. And um, he, he shows grace on her and shows mercy on her and blesses her because she heard, he heard what she had done. And in this story, and I'm not going to go in depth on that. We don't have time for that. Boaz is representative of God. And, and, Mo, and uh, Ruth is a sinner who's coming to the Lord and receiving mercy of the Lord. And that's, that's a, a greater picture it's, that we could see here. But look at verse number 10 in Ruth chapter, chapter 2. The Bible reads, Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? She's like, why do you even, why do you even care about me? I'm just, I'm just a foreigner. I'm just a stranger. How could you possibly even look on me to, to do anything good for me and even just recognize that I'm here? Because that's not the way the world works. But verse 11 says, And Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity and art come unto a people which thou knewest not heretofore, the Lord recompense thy work and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel under whose wings thou art come to trust. So he's saying, you know what? I'm going to bless you because you are willing to leave Moab, leave father, leave mother, and come and join yourself unto a nation that you didn't know, unto a people that you didn't know, and put your trust in the Lord. And just trust in, the, in, in, the, in God. This is what God would have everyone to do. Doesn't matter where you're from. Doesn't matter you're a stranger. Doesn't matter that you're not a child of, of Abraham, physically speaking. Forget your own people. Forget your father's house. He wants you joined to him. And oftentimes we see the Lord being pictured as the husband, right? And his people being the wife. And our job is to be joined unto him and then not go after any other gods, not stray from his rule and his command. And man, I could go on and on and on. We talk about you know, our own relationships and marriages and the way God designed those to be with the husband, the father of the household being in charge and being the ruler of the house and the wife supporting the husband and, and being submissive and being obedient. These are all values that the Bible teaches. And it illustrates a greater truth, but it's still very important. It's not just meaningless. And unfortunately, we live in a wicked world that has turned these great values and truths on their head and just completely destroy the goodness and truth of the Bible. And marriages get destroyed because people don't want to follow God's way. We ought to be doing our best to fill the role that God has put us in. And, and if you, when you follow this analogy, think about it. I've preached many times on how much God loves us. The thoughts are innumerable. He knows the, the hairs on your head. The amount of love he has for you, yet we still are to be obedient to him. Now God is good for us, We've been reading the book of Psalms. He's our defender. He's our rock. He's our shield. He's who we go to and trust in to help us and protect us. But you know who, what we are? We're symbolic. We're represented by the wife. And take that and apply it. You could easily apply it to a husband 
ought to be the defender, the protector of the home, ought to be providing for his wife, ought to be there so that his wife can run to him at any time and be a defender and be a protector and be there for her and take care of her and bless her. But he's still in charge. That's the, God, that's the biblical way. She still ought to be obedient to him. 